everybody, this is Nelson Everhart, and welcome back to the musical tour of The Spiral. This time we're going to look at Marleybone. Marleybone was the second of the first package of five worlds that came out when the game was released. And an interesting note, uh, one of the tunes in Marleybone was the tune that I demoed for King's Isle to get the job writing the music for Wizard 101. I had worked with uh, one of the developers that was working on the team, and he he knew me and knew my work. We'd worked on uh, some other stuff at Acclaim Entertainment together, and he got me the hookup. He said, hey, we're looking at composers for this this new game that we're doing. Um, I think you know your style might work out. Do you want a demo for it? I said, heck yeah. They go, okay, send us something uh, in this vein, and they described the Marleybone world. To me, the, the vision of this this one level was the most obvious in terms of just the, the, the idea and the inspiration. Um, it's kind of got the, the classic Halloween uh, Victorian era instruments and, and inspirations, kind of the, the dark and moody, you know, minor modes to a lot of the themes. One other thing to note before I start, uh, I, I've been resurrecting these tunes from old archives and what I did with this one is actually uh, replace and augment some of the sounds. I, f I found, I think, most of the uh, original sounds. And then I, I thought I'd just update them in a couple sections. I found them a little bit lacking. So you're going to see that notated uh, on the track names here. You know, this is the violin solo new. So this is the new sound. And sometimes I used it in conjunction with the older sound just to give it a little more power. Sometimes, like here, I used it instead of the older sound because I thought it... Uh, it sounded better playing that particular line. All right, so this is the second tune from the Marleybone world. <laughs> the loop uh you may be noticing here there are a lot of tracks in this uh session there were a lot of tracks before i started messing with it uh just recently to resurrect it uh mostly for the solos just to because uh, my libraries have gotten a lot better at um especially like individual solo sounds uh and then i actually have two older this is a much older instrument that came from uh, a motu library called uh, motu symphonic instrument msi and I've had to actually purchase uh, this UVI workstation to read the older library because even Motu doesn't support this library anymore. So I have to have this kind of wrapper to play the sounds from back in the day. And there are four parts per instance here. So these are the sounds uh, that's getting used there. So I kind of split this up from uh, this is strings and the flutes there. And then the other one I think is mostly percussion. Yeah, bell tree cymbals, just like a metal clanking sound and a bass drum going on there. So a lot of stuff to break down here. 
Uh, first of all, I use the harpsichord a lot. That's a pretty easy shortcut into this kind of Victorian Halloween, you know, classic style. The harpsichord is, it looks like a little piano, but when you press the keys, instead of striking a string with like a soft felt hammer, it actually plucks the string. So you get this very, very plucky uh, percussive sound here. And you may kind of associate that with like the Adams family with the da 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 da. It's almost a cliche. It's it's so Halloween. Uh, on top of that, for some of the little mystery stuff, I'm using the celeste here. Obviously, a very uh, mystical, mysterious sound. It's probably best known in uh, like the dance of the sugar plum fairies from the Nutcracker. And then got our harp here. I used a lot of the harp early on in uh, Wizard 101. I thought it had kind of the mystery thing. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very beautiful and versatile instrument that's able to play lead lines. It's able to play chords. It's able to play our, you know, our beautiful arpeggiations of that. But it can also ornament stuff. You know, it can just kind of like uh, it's happening here. where it's just ornamenting the, the harpsichord line there. It's just underlining what it does, and it, it just sounds really pretty. I've got some pizzicato strings going on. Pizzicato is uh, the technique of when the uh, violin, cello, viola, instead of using the bow, which is called arco, they play pizzicato, which means they're plucking the strings. This is this is driving. This is driving the whole thing. You've got kind of the bass line going on, and then also the accompaniment being played in the in the upper strings. Uh, next up in the tracks, I actually have a couple sounds, and I I'll fully admit I haven't used these recently, and I I sort of forgot that they were there. This is from that MSI library that I was talking about, and they're just runs in the violin parts. Uh, there's a run up, and then the run down. And those are just great ornaments for um, for a piece of music. A lot of times sound libraries are, are only focused on one kind of facet of the sound. What I mean by that is that I could play this uh, with, one, with my violin sound, but there, it's not gonna sound the same. It doesn't really, it doesn't have the same impact. There's so many things about the physics of an instrument and the physicality of what people are doing with a violin when they're doing a run and when a whole section of them are doing a run that just, you know, taking the, the, the keyboard controller keys here and me playing, the, you know, the same notes, it's not going to have the same impact. Another really good uh, technique, if you have an ornament like this run, have that run, you know, lead somewhere. So have the good solo sounds take over for it there. Now, one of the libraries that I used a lot uh, back in the original composition of the Wizard 101 music is this uh, East-West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra uh, Silver Sounds. These are just orchestral sounds, and they were really good for back in the day, and some of them even still sound really, really well. I was, I was surprised how well they held up in certain sections doing certain things. This opening, uh, it, it says it's a violin solo sound, but I obviously used it as a whole uh, string patch here. They're playing really high, you know, Divisi, probably the uh, violins and the violas here. So that's, that sound still, still holds up. This is the new solo violin. This is from the uh, LA scoring strings library. This is the the violin patch and it just you can tell that it just does some certain certain things a lot better <laughs> Playing on top of this particular sound just the top line and it's just to make that one pop out So this is uh, just as a reminder. This is just the uh, old sound here
And this is with the uh, LA scoring strings. First chair solo violin on top. I think it just it, it punches a lot harder right there. Both the clarinet and the flute here are uh, from the Cine, Cine Sample Cinewinds Library. These sounds are are so much fun to play. They just they sound amazing. Just like goofing around on them, you can just find some amazing things to do. So you've got both on the articulation patches, you've got both legato and staccato, and you, and you switch between them just by pressing the sustain pedal. With the sustain pedal down, you're playing the legato. And with, with the sustain up, you've got that going on. Plus, it's got the uh, mod wheel controlling the dynamics. That's with the wheel way down. I've wasted so much time <laughs> just messing around with these libraries. Beautiful, beautiful sound. You, the other thing I do a lot is I love the the French horn. I've talked about the the diversity of sound libraries. You know, where this one patch, you know, it's a French horn and it sounds really good. Say doing, uh, you know, legato lines. But then if you need it to speak quickly, if you need it to do any quick staccato lines, da 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 da, it doesn't speak fast enough. So sometimes just to emulate the horns here, I need four different patches to make it happen. I had a, a horn solo patch that was here and it, uh, it sounds really good for some parts, especially slower chords like that. And it's got some, you know, good dynamics in it, but the kind of the, the lead part doesn't sound as good. It's not really, the attacks are all too consistent. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you, you hear, this is the Cine Samples, uh, Cine Brass horn patch. French horns can also do, you know, staccato parts. I call it the, the parp which is the parp, 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 parp. I had a children's book at one time and it, it, it was talking about all the different, the sounds of the different musical instruments. And the author claimed that the French horns made the sound parp, parp. So it's kind of stuck with me for all this time. So here's the parps, very staccato. But it's got some burn when you hit the keys harder. I really like uh, some of the Marleybone tracks because they have the, the tuba kind of banging away down there sometimes the tuba can sound uh, a little comedic but i i think some of the the halloween style music does have a little bit of goofiness in it um and just that bass line and this is east west quantum leap again it's still just a, a good sound I, I have used it on more recent things and then we get down into the percussion where i'm using uh, orchestral chimes i do that a lot and then i've got two tracks of cymbals here and again some of them i think these are the cymbal rolls and then there's crashes crashes on this track right there uh, i've got a bell tree there's just a couple if you're as old as I am, you probably remember that sound from uh, the old read-along storybooks where it's, you know, you'll know it's time to turn the page when you hear the bell tree that go like this. I think I had a Disney Haunted Mansion uh, storybook read-along, and I'm pretty sure that's where the, that's where the, they use the bell tree because they wanted a mysterious sound. There you go. You know, a, a lot of this stuff is just sort of embedded you know, in our shared culture. This track is kind of a conundrum to me. Sometimes I do some things because, you know, I'm in a mood or I'm feeling something. Uh, I, I like it. I like what I did with it. It's just, it's a very odd part. So 
it's atonal. Those notes aren't, you know, in in a scale or anything. They're just kind of metal clanks there. I must have thought that that part needed something uh, weirder going on. Um, I do like this section for the the weirdness. This theme uh, is just such a such an odd duck. Uh, I, I really enjoyed how kind of off it is. You know, you kind of think you know where you are with the with that first. You know, you know where you are here. But then this uh, flat five right here kind of just really throws you off. And it just sort of goes back and forth. I remember coming up with this theme and, and uh, enjoying how unbalanced or something. <laughs> And that line's so odd and weird. Right after it, it kind of goes into a more gentle version of that theme, <laughs> kind of to reassure you. Um, one of the things I think this tune does well is really plays with uh, the melody. It plays with it and explores the melody. It throws the melody around into different keys to different instruments uh, and, and presents it in different styles, which is something that I think music at its best comes, you know, brings themes back and reexamines them under new, under a new light. So the astute among you may notice that this is the end of this track, but there's more material after the end of it. So when I'm writing... I'll come up with some ideas and if an idea is good or interesting, but it's not working where it is, I'll slide it to the end of the track. And I may, you know, when I get to, I'll keep writing. And when I get to a new section, I may grab that and see if it works uh, in the new location. If it doesn't, it just kind of stays at the end of the track. Uh, these are some ideas that I had for the original track that didn't work out for whatever reason. So remember this end bit isn't mixed. Some of these parts may not even have been designed to go together, but here it is. <laughs> Maybe I had that here and decided it wasn't working there. Uh, so I just I slid it out here. I don't even know why I kept that because that's that pretty terrible. <laughs> and again, the, these parts weren't polished yet. You know, they were just sort of my, my initial ideas to try and go somewhere. So that, that's a neat little line, and I, I like it. I still like it, you know, somehow. Just I wasn't able to kind of explore it over there. Thanks, guys. That'll do it for this one. Um, thanks for watching. Please leave a thumbs up. And also leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or, you know, a favorite tune from one of the worlds that I can uh, take a look at. Bye.